This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and today we're going to do a smackdown between the Nokia Lumia 920 and the Blackberry Z10. Both of them are going to be available on AT&T. This guy here, $99, a little bit cheaper. This guy, $199. We're going to look at them now. So here we have two smartphones for you rebellious folks, you people who said, been there, done that with the iPhone, you're not into Android, vice versa. You're just, you're just a little bit rebellious maybe and you want to get something different. So what does that mean? Right now it means either a Windows phone or it means the new BlackBerry, running BlackBerry OS 10, And this is the Z10 model, which is the first to hit the market. So how do you choose between these two? Well, in the U.S., obviously, the, the Nokia Lumia 920 is being heavily subsidized. It's, so it's only $99 with contract versus $199 for the BlackBerry Z10. Now, if you're buying them retail off contract, there's a $100 difference in price as well. One thing to consider also is that the Lumia 920 can stand in also for the excellent HTC 8X, which is a bit more expensive, a little bit smaller than this. So we, you get the idea. We're helping you also decide on the platform here and not just the particular device. But as we do examine the devices themselves, you can see that the BlackBerry is a little bit smaller because there's a 4.2 inch display versus the 4.5 inch display on the Nokia Lumia. Now Nokia did not try to make this a small phone relative to the screen size. It's a pretty hefty guy. It's kind of heavy and it doesn't really cut a very small footprint. The HTC 8X, for example, is a lot more pocketable, a lot smaller, if that's something that is important to you. We have Nokia's beautiful clear black display here and its claim to fame is it has a 60 hertz refresh and it works with gloves and fingernails. Also handy, if it's not winter, for folks like me, I play acoustic guitar, I have calluses on my fingers and this phone doesn't work so well, this one does. So likewise, if you work outdoors a lot and you have calloused fingers, something to keep in mind, it's not just about the gloves. The Nokia display is a bit brighter as well. Uh, honestly, both of them are quite viewable outdoors, so I'm not complaining. And they both have very high pixel density. You're looking at 1280 by 768 resolution. So obviously the Nokia Lumia is a little bit bigger. The pixel density isn't going to be quite as high, but really both good looking phones with vibrant colors. If we look at the overall package in terms of thickness, about a millimeter thicker for the Nokia. And a millimeter isn't that much. I wouldn't get too bent out of shape about it. We got our little speaker grill vent holes here, and the speaker vents out of this single hole right here on the BlackBerry. That's our micro USB charging port down there. And that's the only port that you're going to find. Now, if we take a look at the BlackBerry on the side, we have here both micro USB and micro HDMI out. That's something that Windows Phone lacks right now. So, a nice feature to have for those of you who want to plug into a projector, a TV, or even a monitor. 3.5mm jack on both of these guys. That's the power button up here. And on this side we have volume controls, dedicated camera button, power button, and here we have volume controls and a play pause button in the center here that also brings up voice control on the BlackBerry. Now what's so special here about the BlackBerry is it may not be as exciting looking, it may not be that nifty poly polycarbonate all-in-one look that you've got right here. And by the way, this Nokia is about impossible to destroy and it's got Gorilla Glass up front. But with the BlackBerry, you can do something that's increasingly special with phones. You can actually remove the back and swap out the battery, access your SIM card. That's not a problem. Of course, all phones have accessible SIM cards on AT&T. But we've also got a micro SD card slot for storage expansion. 16 gigs of internal storage on your BlackBerry right here. 32 gigs on the Nokia Lumia 920, but you can expand that with the BlackBerry. You can, and it works very fluidly with the music application, the video player, that kind of thing. This is an 1800 milliamp versus a 2000 milliamp battery that's built into the Nokia Lumia. And on the back view here, we have textured plastic stuff versus very glossy plastic on the Lumia. Lumia is one of those slippery like a bar of soap phones. So the BlackBerry gets points for being grippy there, although the Lumia gets points for being available in many colors and being just so darn pretty and unique looking. On the back we see our both of our phones have 8 megapixel cameras with LED flash. Uh, Nokia wins this one. They have one of the better cameras on the market. 8.7 megapixels actually. Backside illuminated sensor. Really, really nice camera for both photo and video. The BlackBerry has relatively very few settings and it does okay, but not nearly as well in low light. i got to say, camera is going to win on the Nokia. Well, the BlackBerry gets big, big points for having a user replaceable battery. I'd have to say that battery life is better on the Nokia Lumia 920. Now, the 
the, the international version, the version that came out in Canada of the BlackBerry Z10 got dinged for battery life, but BlackBerry has since released an OS update that really addresses that, and that includes the AT&T version that gets the same software version. So battery life is not abysmal by any means, but I have to say that the Lumia is a real energizer bunny for me. It, with moderate use, it really goes at least a day and a half or two days on a charge often, and standby times are excellent. With my BlackBerry, pretty much, you know, I, it's going to be one day with moderate use to heavy use, certainly, for a charge. Both of these phones have dual band Wi Fi, 811 BGN, Bluetooth, NFC, and a GPS. They both have front cameras for video chat. Primarily, you're going to want to use Skype probably on your Windows phone, and we're still waiting for Skype to come out on the Blackberry. Not there yet. Now, when it comes to user interface, both of these are unique. Windows phone is certainly got to be the most unique among smart smartphone operating systems right now. We have the live tile look here, we, which we now see on Windows 8 PCs. Honestly, incredibly easy to figure out how to use. I always use my mother as the test case for this. I gave her this phone. No problem. Right away, start scrolling around. You can see what the different applications are. Pretty clearly tap on them what you want to do. A little mystery at first if you want to get to all applications here. Not a very big mystery, though. And inside of applications, the controls are very uniform in terms of the options that you're going to have at the bottom here. Now, BlackBerry looks pretty familiar at first, too, because, well, we're all used to the grid of icons. We have that on the iPhone. We have that on Android. We've had that in previous versions of BlackBerry operating system that were in touchscreen, so that's pretty clear. But everything beyond that is a little bit of a mystery at first to beginners. Now, you smart folks won't have any problem with this. You'll pick up on those gestures, or if you've had a playbook, you'll get it. BlackBerry OS X has the usual scrolling palette of icons over here, but if you keep going, you see right here, this is our hub notification system, BlackBerry Hub. This is where your email, your text messages, your notification that their application updates available, they're all going to show up here. In fact, there is no dedicated email application icon that you're going to find, which is a little disconcerting at first. Usually you'll see a menu option over here in an application, and we've got that right here. But all of these guys can vary. Sometimes you see that, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you have to scroll down, or swipe down rather, to bring something up. So that can be a little confusing, and you swipe sideways. As a notification system, you do see things on screen. It'll tell you you missed a call, you have a new email, that kind of thing. And then you swipe over to take a look. So it's sort of the sideways version of notifications on the iPhone in a way, where you just sweep down to take a look at things, and you can actually manage some stuff directly from in here, get things going. Windows Phone, on the other hand, it's what's called Toast Notification System. There's like nothing going on here. Microsoft originally envisioned all of these live tiles would keep you updated on what's going on. For example, if you have new mail, you'll see a counter there telling you. If you miss a call, you'll see missed call, voicemail, that kind of thing. Briefly, you'll see on screen a notification when something happens, and then it's gone. Mm. They need to work on that, and I hear that they are. They want to get that into Windows Phone 8, and they Microsoft didn't manage to. So right now, for notifications, gee, BlackBerry is just going to be a winner on there. But as we get back to what's so different about BlackBerry operating system is everything is very gesture based. You see there's no home button here at all. No hardware home button, no software home button. Everything is going to be done either you swipe up if you want to close something, you swipe sideways back and forth, occasionally you swipe down to bring up options. And let's just bring up an app so you can see. Now you can see right there I do have a little tap so I can get to more settings right there. And if I want to close this application, I'm going to swipe up. I can swipe down to see, in this case, just the title of the page. Tap there to get our menu items. No home button, so when you're done, just remember to swipe up. And here's our version of multitasking. These little cards that stay on screen. Now, some of them are live and will update. Some of them do get suspended for memory management purposes. So, clearly a different way of handling things. Multitasking on Windows Phone is handled a little bit differently press and hold the back button to see all apps that are running and you can scroll between them to get to everything. No cards, no swipes, no nothing like that. So in terms of you know UI, it really depends on what you want. If you want super duper impossibly easy, I would say Windows Phone wins. But however, once you learn the BlackBerry 10 operating system, it's not bad and it's pretty powerful. And they did design it to be used with one hand. All those little swipe things, the idea is that you can just do that with your thumb really depends on what tickles your fancy more, what you're looking for in your smartphone. 
When it comes to the app story, shockingly, you know, Windows Phone was always the one lagging behind iOS and Android, but it's becoming more mature now. Microsoft has really had a push to get a whole lot of applications there, and Microsoft Store just has a lot of good stuff now. And I'm talking about higher quality applications. Let's take a look at some of the top free things here. We've obviously got SkyDrive. We've got MS Office built in here. Of course, that's the mobile version. It's not going to do everything that your computer does. We've got a couple of Google Maps substitutes going on here. Obviously, the built-in mapping application on this is Bing Maps. We'll talk about Maps a little bit more, but this is pretty mature. The funny thing is that given the Xbox Live integration and, and Microsoft's expertise with gaming, I've never found the games to be that exciting on this. Uh, they're not the same ones that become real popular hits on Android and iOS. Talking about things like Dead Trigger, Real Racing 3. BlackBerry instead, well, you know, it's brand new and the application push is supposedly not going to be starting until the U.S. release, which is about a week off still. But I have to say that, though in numbers, the BlackBerry is saying that they have about 70,000 apps at this point. Now, a lot of these were playbook apps before. The quality is pretty sad. We're talking about a whole bunch of stock apps that really are not very impressive, for example. And a lot of them actually cost money, which gee, people who use Android and iOS are just going to find a little bit shocking. Used to be on the find staple apps, basic ones that don't cost anything. May have to do with the lack of a good ad subsidy inside of applications where the developer can make some money that way. But in terms of top tier applications, a lot you won't find Netflix here, you're not going to find Instagram. A lot of the popular apps aren't here yet. Will they show up? I don't know. The problem is this guy is just so brand new. So we're not going to condemn it yet. We're going to say right now though if you want a whole bunch of apps Believe it or not, Windows Phone is the better bet. Obviously, iOS and Android are going to be the top pick still. In terms of content, you can rent and buy movies, you can buy music, you can stream music uh, on both platforms. Microsoft has their service. It goes back to the Zune days. It's actually pretty darn good. And this one's powered by Rovi. It also works just fine, too. So in terms of purchasable content, you're good to go there. Now, when it comes to maps, this is a uh, this is a slaughter right here, folks. With Windows Phone, you get Bing Maps. If you get, and you have your option of using also Nokia Drive Beta, which has spoken turn by turn directions, POIs between Bing Maps, which has great POIs, and Nokia for your driving directions. It's both of them are very good products. Of course, there's also AT&T Navigator if you're actually on AT&T, and and BlackBerry Maps. We're still waiting to hear what's going on, by the way, with AT&T Navigator if it's going to be available for the BlackBerry Z10. But meanwhile, you got BlackBerry Maps, which has just about Zippo POIs. 2D maps only. When you're driving, it does give you rudimentary 3D and really just a lot less features. For music and video playback, Microsoft did a really nice job here. I have to say, this is actually my favorite mobile experience, and they put music and videos together along with podcasts as well. It's just very visually pleasing, and you can take a look at what you've been playing lately, what's new, swing over to apps. If we take a look at music, it's presented in the, pretty much in the, the same UI way that we see in, throughout the entire OS. Let me pick something. Nice looking view right there. And here on the BlackBerry, we're in the music application. Music and videos are separate, and that's okay, that's allowed. And it, we don't have any album art for these, it's not picking it up, so. Tap on it, pick a track. It's a competent UI. It gets the job done. Just not as pretty as this. First, our BlackBerry. It's a nice, clean sound from the BlackBerry. Not bad sound there from, from Lumia. And ladder, and I can tell you the HTC 8X beats both of them. Boy, really nice sound coming out of that one. And our video interface, here's what we have here, a list of thumbnails and then a list view is presented on the Lumia. Honestly, both really lovely screens, very nice for watching video. I personally have a preference for bigger screens. 4.5 inches to me is a sweet spot for reasonable portability and having a better experience for viewing things, but nonetheless, 1080p trailer here. Looks great. Sounds great. Plays fine. 
And now we'll do the test with the Blackberry. We've got another trailer. Not quite as eye popping a screen in terms of how luminescent it is and the and the colors popping, but still really a very lovely display. Won't complain. And for our dialers, large on screen both basically studies in hues of black and gray and white going on here. Equally easy to use. I have access to your contacts, your call history, your dial pad right here. And with the Windows phone, you back out of the dialer if you want to get to your call history and to your contacts, but access to the same thing. In terms of voice quality, these are both excellent phones. Really nice, clear audio, good volume on it, a little bit louder for the Lumia on the volume, but honestly, both of them very, very nice in coming outgoing call quality. And also in terms of reception, AT&T's LTE network, very strong reception. Definitely a tie there, both good phones. In terms of LTE speeds, experientially, they're both very fast. Web pages download quickly, applications download quickly. Really, there's no good speed test yet on the BlackBerry, so we can't give you a good cross-platform comparison yet for data speeds. But I can tell you, it feels fast. It is fast. No complaints with data speeds. For the web browsing experience, you're looking at modern web browsers on both sides, HTML5 support, pinch zooming, fast scrolling. Uh, personally, I would pick the slightly larger phone myself because it's easier to read the fonts, but hey, that's also a matter of how big a phone that you want to carry around. Big plus for the BlackBerry, it supports Adobe Flash Player. Just about disappeared from other mobile smartphone operating systems. You can still get it on the BlackBerry, so that's a big plus for those of you who are really addicted to certain shows that are only available as Adobe Flash format. Also nice is there's a reader function. You know, iOS also has it on the iPhone takes web pages, uh, say you're reading an article and there's a whole lot of banner ads flashing on there, or other extraneous stuff, you really don't want to see that, there's a reader setting on there. So you can pretty much just streamline and read just the text, something that the Windows Phone web browser, IE10 mobile, lacks. When it comes to universal search, BlackBerry Z10 wins because, well, it has that feature. Windows Phone doesn't. It can be pretty annoying. If you hit the search button right now, you're going to go to a Bing search. If you want to search your contacts, you go into contacts and you hit the search button. If you're in calendar, there's no search button. You don't get to search your calendar. Ow. Though we've given the BlackBerry a little bit of a hard time in terms of application selection from their stores, I just want to say that they start you out with some good stuff right here. You get docs to go, and that's for your MS Office. You can view, create, and edit Word and Excel files, and you can edit and view PowerPoint files. And we have really good social network integration here. We have Facebook, we have LinkedIn, we have Twitter, and we also have both Dropbox and, Bo and Box for your cloud storage. And the integration with Dropbox is really very good with the operating system, and there's Evernote integration as well with the Remember app. like that a lot. With Windows Phone, you get the basics. You get your calendar, your contacts, your PIM stuff, of course, as I said, MS Office Mobile on here. Still, there's no native, there's no Dropbox client, and a little bit surprising. There are some third-party ones that get the job done, but not with that level of integration you're going to get with an official client. And on Windows Phone, we finally have a a genuine Twitter client, and we have a Facebook application that's provided by Microsoft. What, what, what Microsoft does, though, is they integrate that into your People Hub pretty well themselves. So that, that's why I think Twitter and, and Facebook were not running to actually jump out with clients when Windows Phone 8 first shipped, and they do a pretty good job. Not as powerful as a full-feature client in all ways, but still, it, it gets the job done for most of us, and it, it is a handy place to have everything integrated. And again, you see some of that same integration on Windows 8 PCs. With Windows Phone, you actually do get discrete email application versus being tied to the BlackBerry Hub like we have here. Everything runs through there for email. Here we have a separate icon set up for each of our email accounts. The little default one's always going to be the Hotmail or Windows Live account, and you can set up your Gmail just as you can on the BlackBerry and so on. With Gmail right now, Windows Phone still gets Exchange Active Sync for instant push notifications. Uh, they, they cut a little deal with Google. Go, Google wanted to cut everybody off on February 1st of this year, but they get to go until the summer before they have to transition over on Windows Phone 8. With the BlackBerry, you're going to be using IMAP, Idle, CalDave, and CardDave to get all your Google stuff on board. So that's our SmackDown comparison between the Nokia Lumia 920 and the BlackBerry Z10. Be available any day now on AT&T.
And then for two, relatively speaking, upstart smartphone operating systems, they're actually both very evolved. I would say BlackBerry did a great job of getting a very complete product out, but well, the app ecosystem is obviously going to be more robust for the Windows Phone. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to watch our video review of each of these products and read our full written reviews. And while you're at it, subscribe to our YouTube channel.